put that hand in the, you can put that hand in the fridge and tell your children that you shook Uncle Sop. Shaking me is going to cost a lot of money, I'm telling you, because it's really, really difficult to find me as a human being. You you have to make efforts. Second, I'm such a great guy, you know. Shaking me is something, it's important. <laughs> So Uncle Sopi's handshake is the most important prize here. Then we also have uh, financial prizes we are giving for no reason. There will be no Heineken the competition. It is the scores you sent to me that will decide who wins. So you can even send the scores while we are talking tomorrow. Tomorrow also, not tomorrow, on Friday rather. On Friday as well, you are going to be required to present your reports. Tell us how you've gone so far, what you've done so far, the challenges you are facing, how we can come alongside you. Some of you have done incredible work this last year. For example, the boot camp. I'm sure Francis is still working <laughs> with the people because it's not just the event. A lot of things came after that he's still working on. Uh, the essay competition, the people that did our school outreaches and all that, the person monitoring our seminars. You've done some great work. We we'll need you to talk about it and tell us how you can do better. So if you are going to give a report, I will expect you to say something like, um, these are the challenges I had. These are the things I did well. And these are the kind of support I need. Just short, short stories, you know. And who knows, you can be ahead in life, like ahead, like this head here, you know, ahead. <laughs> <laughs> ahead in life. So, but let me know the kind of questions you have. Um, would you rather do 10 questions or less? Let me hear you. What do you think? Please, let's do less, stuff. Oh, come on. I thought you said let's do more than. No, I said less. <laughs> okay. How many questions do you want to do? Five questions per person, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Do we have any other person supporting this motion? Yes, five questions. Oh. Francis in the chat says he wants five questions. And yes, Vivian, you should go for the handshake. The handshake is the best, I'm telling you. So five questions. Um, okay. But we have one vote for 15 questions. So let's say we have five, 10, <laughs> 15 <laughs> questions. Um, if we do voting wise, um, well, not five four. <laughs> but so somebody is really ready to work. They want fifteen questions. People are saying fifteen. <laughs> oh, okay, let's make it five questions then. Five questions. Cool. Cool. Um, Thank you, sir. So let's jump right in. Um, let me give you this video, and um, I would like to hear what you think about the video. Can you hear this? Can you hear this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Just to make sure. I'm forcing myself to hear. That's a good one. Keep keep doing that. The sign grows great when old men plant trees, the shade of which they know they will never sit in. Good people do things for other people. That's it, the end. So the point of this video is that the woman is telling Ricky Gervais, uh, Ricky Gervais is a comedian, 
in the UK. The society goes great when old men plant trees that they know they will never sit under. And good people do things for other people, the end. So how does this video speak to you? All right, this, this is really easy to fix. I can just call people to tell me what they think. Um, I'll just be calling people one after the other. So, Samuel, tell me, what do you think about this video? Well, is what I think is that it tells us um, how one needs how to do things and what you should put in place um, how you should react to a situation in terms of doing a carrying out activities, how serious you should do it. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that's great. But Peter, what do you think? All right, sir. So, um, I think uh, the video talked about um, like uh, saving humanity, and in service to humanity, I think uh, is the people's is the people force before you. Right. Says a society goes great when old men plant trees that they know they will never sit under, and good people do things do good things does it so you find that the bible also says something like that which is um a good tree a good man out of the fruits of his heart he brings forth good fruits a good man out of the fruits of his heart brings forth good fruit so this is our underlining principle in pfl we do things that are good the end now Ultimately, you will do things and you find that God will bless you. But it's not like we are after God's blessing. It's not that like we are not after God's blessing. But what I'm trying to let you know is this. We do good things, the end. That is, we are trying to make the world better than we met it. That's all. There is um, anybody that wants to work with us who have that mindset. There is no financial blessing or commitment that we will give to you. We are not a job yet. We are hoping to get there that we have like big grants and we are able to employ people, but we are not that yet. So for now, but even if we are that, we would rather that people that come to work for us have the correct mindset. And that is the mindset that you are here to do good to other people, the end. Now, it doesn't mean that all your life is set. And it doesn't mean that all the good bad things in your life, you have resolved them. It doesn't mean that you have blown, so to speak. But it means that you have the heart to know that you are somebody that is supposed to do good things to other people, make life better for other people. And in making life better for other people, it may require that you yourself will take your personal health seriously because we need you here. You are important to us, right? We need you to make progress in life. Like we need you to get scholarships. We need you to get jobs, get um, opportunities to work in very top firms, make money and sponsor events and your life moving well is as important as the projects you volunteer to do. And so it's a, it's a full on, um, it's an exhaustive plan towards making life better for other people. And that includes making the right decision for yourself. You cannot say you are working hard to make life better for other people, but you are your uncle, for example or you are on or whatever you you can't be like that you must be somebody that your own life is together so that from that blessings of your life you can transmit to other people if you get what i'm trying to say 
our main our main aim in PFF is to live everywhere better than we met it. For now, we are tied to education. We only give educational services. We help in educational interventions. But we want you, as somebody who is sitting here with us, to have that mindset that let this place I come in become better because of me. You know, that is the mindset of somebody that wants to be a part of PFF. Um, what does PFF stand for? Because it's Precious Fountain Foundation. So acronym-wise, we already know what PFF stands for. But what is the purpose of the PFF plan, um, of the PFF idea? What is the power, the place of the PFF vision? We are going to be answering all of these questions. Um, PFF stands for Precious Fountain Foundation. The purpose of this foundation is to help to make education better. And I have always known personally that Nigerian education is lacking in a lot of wonderful things for young people who are its product. Why? Because education is what is used to prepare young people for their future. Whether you like it or not, life is like a relay race. You do your own, you hand over to another person. That person does what they can do and hands over to another person. You can't live all of life alone. And so education is how you prepare somebody. You were just born. Three years or four years later, they put you in nursery school. School is a way of bringing knowledge in piecemeal to you. It's not all there is. But there is a way that if I told you on your own, go and figure out mathematics, it will really take you time before you know what almighty formula is. It will really take you a lot of time. And if you are me, you will never figure it out. You, you will never get there. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you can know almighty formula in a school because school brings you knowledge mm -hmm. in a planned form. They teach you about things. But I noticed that Nigerian education is highly defective. It does not prepare young people adequately. Because me, when I left the university, I had finished all there was to study. And that is true. University is tertiary education. You don't have to even go to university in working countries. But we all in Nigeria, we have to, you know. So I finish university. I don't know what I'm here for. Like, if I did a profit, I'm a lawyer, but I, I didn't just want to go and sit in a law firm. I could never do that. I hate lawyers. You know, <laughs> what <laughs> what other options were open to somebody like me? I couldn't go to sit in a firm and we are planning to sue somebody. I, I didn't like the whole setup. So it was clear to me as day that education in Nigeria is defective. And so PFF comes in to stand in that gap between what is supposed to be and what is. We breach that gap. There is a lot to do. And we are hoping that we will one day have the ability to policy-wise change the direction of education in Nigeria. But until we get there, we will be doing projects mainly. We'll be doing projects, we'll be doing events, we'll be training teachers, we'll be doing seminars, just as we are doing, until we get there. What is the power of the PFF vision? The power of the PFF vision is the ability to change someone's life, help them understand that they are not less than who they think they are. I remember one project we went to do somewhere in the North, and we asked the children what they want to be in the future. And they didn't have anything to say. So I said, I called out one girl and said, what do you want? She said she wants to get married. I said, get married? How old are you? 11. I was there over at Jesus. You want to get married 11 years? How can that be your problem? But then that is the socialization of those people. And we had to really spend time to let the children know that you could be lawyers, you could be doctors. They thought of those things as things that belong to somewhere. I also remember in um, 
2017 when we went to Fordham and we had children that could not read. We were there for like one week and uh, we taught reading readiness. I was the one teaching reading readiness. My friend um, was teaching arithmetic. But by the end of that week, the children could now see words and call them out, you know. We thought A, A for A, B for B, that kind of thing. So they could pick those things out. And just like this light bulb moment, you see how their face shines when they get it, you know. And that was that's one of my best moments in life. When they when you see it, you know, when the children are now, they can see words. It's no longer, it's no longer things you know they are they are words now they've come alive to them and it really really gave my life a meaning right and that is the point of pff when we bring things to communities the joy they express the happiness they show us and the fact that we can have people that have thoroughly turned their life around even if it's just by giving a child a school bag a note or something like that that thing you do at that moment in time is frozen in eternity and it will ring through in all of time somehow i believe god takes notice as well and so that is the power of the pff vision and for you that is the person who is the doer you are also transformed right you are not just the person who does the person who does like me now I remember those moments and I'm encouraged to do more. And that is how you yourself, who is also doing, will remember these moments and also be encouraged to do more. <laughs> because the thing you are doing for other people is changing you as you are changing them. You get what I'm saying? As I'm making my, as I'm um, applying myself to other people, my life is changing. I'm becoming a better human being. And I am relying more on God to help me. And you yourself, when you do that, you're also having that lesson as well, the blessing of the person who gives. And that is why God, the Bible, I will cite a lot of the Bible because I'm a Christian. The Bible would say that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And you look at that statement, it doesn't make sense because the person who is giving is parting with a resource. I'm removing money from myself, but there is a change that happens in you. If you don't have that sweetness that comes to you as you help another person's life, you will not understand what we do in PFF because it just doesn't make sense. There is no money in it. What are we doing here? Instead, you are bringing your own money and spending your own time and resource. You are... We are doing PFF meetings sometimes late into the night. People are spending hours thinking of what to do for PFF and help another person. And they are not being paid. It doesn't make any sense to somebody who is so financially motivated, right? But you, you have to get it. I don't know. Let me ask some of you who has been part of our event to talk about it, whether you get what I'm trying to say. Um, Francis, you are the person I will call now. Tell me, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, oh, I forgot Francis is having a talk issue. <laughs> Bisola, let me call you. You've been part of what we've been for a while now. Do you get what I'm saying? Bisola, if you are speaking, you may need to first unmute yourself. Can you hear me, sir? I don't. Who is this, please?
بسرعة I think she has network issues. Who has been part of PFF events before? Yeah. Mutun Rayo, tell me. Okay. Good evening, sir. How did you feel when you did our school outreach? It felt really, 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 it felt fulfilling, like it was fulfilling, like. I was doing something that that was helping people that people could like that I was creating memories in people's lives that they could hold on to forever and could keep them going. It felt really nice, uh, actually. It felt yeah. very fulfilling. And yeah. Yes, sir. Do you like Semo? Sir? Do you like Simon? No, sir, not at all. Never. Oh, okay. What do you like? Oh, found it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the blue why I asked you that question, the way you said it feels so fulfilling. It feels so feeling. Was it feeling you said or fulfilling? Because I, I could have sworn I had feeling and I was wondering, is this day hungry? Fulfilling. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, no, it's feeling. <laughs> I thought you were saying it's feeling, and then I was now thinking we are we are here in PFL. Stop thinking of food. Uh, okay, but that's no, good. No. That's great, and that that is the yes. point. You know that why I'm saying this is because research has shown that there are people that are unable to feel that way. They 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 don't understand what it means to help another person if they don't um. They don't get anything in return. You know, they don't get it. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't like to work with that kind of person. That person is so about themselves. They are so inside themselves. They don't really get it if they help another person. This is not the place for that kind of person. You can work with us to make money. <laughs> I will need you there. <laughs> but this is a different a different source of uh, self-actualization. And it's about time that our nation thinks of that, which is um, it's about time that we begin to think of another way to create value that is not money. And finally, we come to place on this slide, which is the place of the PFF vision. Where is PFF going to? PFF is supposed to be Nigerian specific. And this is why, if you notice, we didn't invite any other person that is not currently in the country now. Even if you are not in Nigeria now, you are still Nigerian in this call. But I think everybody here is in Nigeria. So. Um, the place of PFF started with a Nigerian focus. We were supposed to focus on Nigeria. However, we begin to notice that Nigerian problems are nearly the same problems everywhere. And so we can go out of our place to participate in sending help to other places. But it doesn't mean that our base is not Nigeria. Nigeria is our country. And so um, before the end of the year, or before the end of the first quarter of next year, we might be having an expanded PFF house that will involve our partners and younger people who also volunteer with us in universities outside Nigeria. But for now, this is the point of what we want to do. We want to talk with people that are the core of what PFF is doing on the ground in Nigeria. And so that will bring us to our introductions now. Um, if you tell us who you are, you tell us where you are from, not like not like where you are from, like where you are joining this call from. Um, I expect a bulk of you will be from OAU, but let me hear you out. Yes, I noticed that Jennifer is not here as well. Emperor, did you speak to Jennifer?
Okay, I can't hear any of you, but let me have you introduce yourself, starting from um, Emperor. Emperor, tell me, did you speak to Jennifer? Oh, I don't know, maybe the person I spoke to is Jennifer, but I spoke with everyone. I called some. Okay. So can you introduce yourself quickly? Yes. My name is Samson Ojo. I'm from Obapemi Aulo University, a past four student of Obapemi Aulo University, studying raw production and protection. I'm a photographer by profession and a digital marketing with affiliate marketing together. So if there's anything you need in the digital space and in the media space, just contact me. I'm always here. Thank you. Great. Bisola, do you want to introduce yourself? Bisola, I don't think you have enabled your audio because we can't hear anything you are saying, even though your, <clears throat> your listening is open. Um, Charles, do you want to introduce yourself? I think Charles Network is bad again. Chine, can you introduce yourself? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Okay, I'm Chine Onyebushi. Um, I live in Imo State now, like, I mean, worry. Okay, what else? I'm just a recent graduate of petroleum engineering. I'm a data analyst, too. Okay. I'm a, I'm an SDG advocate, so what else? I think that's all. Okay, thanks. So now you know Chine, and you know um, Emperor. Deborah, do you want to introduce yourself? Um. Okay, good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Um. My name is Fajobi Deborah Enola. I mostly go by Debbie. Okay, so I'm currently in, in Leife, Ocean State. Um, a student of the Obafemi Awolowo University, proudly studying food science and technology. Um, I I mostly do volunteer works for programs like the organizing programs on campus. I volunteer if I have time and such. Then what else? Okay. Um. Um. I'm a beginner into I'm a bit how do I put it? I'm just getting into the tech world, but um let's say I'm a beginner, I'm an amateur in technical writing. I hope to branch out to copywriting and contest writing and contest creation too. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, nice to meet you, Deborah. Thank you, sir. Francis. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Okay. He just jumped off. <laughs> Jason Ball, tell me. Okay, um, my name is I'm also a student of Obafemi Awolo University Late. Um, Oh, okay. Jason, but tell me. Hi, um, good evening, everyone. My name is Jason Bolubim. I'm a final year student. Oh, I'm not a student. I'm a, um, I just graduated. 
from the faculty of law of female law university thank you what you know Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Akwankwa Mutra Abisola. I'm a participant at the Department of Microbiology. I'm in IFE. OAE, yes. And that's all. Thank you. I'm a writer. Thank you. Here. Yeah. Okay, good Peter, do you want to introduce yourself? Vivian? Da, when? Um, sorry. I was hearing something. Um, when? Yeah, my name yes, I'm um I'm all watching Vivian and I'm a student, not proudly studying history. Um yeah, I like that I guess. And then what else? Nothing. I have a big age, as you notice from the presentation, so that's all. Thank you so much for highlighting that last part. Someone, Jacob. Uh, good evening, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Samuel Olishola Jacob. I am into graphics design and also industrial cleaning. That's to clean for houses. I do cleaning for houses. Do also cleaning for offices and that. And I reside currently in Abuja. Right. Thank you so very much. I appreciate you very much. So um, I'll be talking about the history of PFF so that you understand where we're coming from, um, what we've done so far. Um, we have not blown, <laughs> but we are working on it. So part of our strategy of blowing is to have all of you become billionaires. <laughs> So you can just give us 1% of your income to light up Africa or something. So um, in 2014, in August, I've already told this story before, but for those who don't know, maybe we'll tell it again, was when I understood the vision of what PFF is supposed to be. And I was, I didn't know what to name it. And I was trying to find passages in the Bible to connect it to. And so, um, in Psalm 36, verse 9, which is the fountain of life, in your light do we see light. I connected with that. It was like a really, really um, strong connection with what I was, the vision I was having in my heart, which is to provide radical Christian education to children free of charge. Radical Christian education was also a curriculum that was being developed by the Rafiki School in Jos. Um, <clears throat> I think they were in Anwarukuba at the moment. But they had you stay and take it, their training for one month, intensive. And so in coming to this vision, we've gone through many things. We've done many things connected to children, young people, I, I like children a lot. I work with children for years. I still do. And anything that concerns children, I'm, I'm already involved. It depends on when you want me to <laughs> get involved. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm automatically in. And so one of the things I notice when we look at the problem in Nigeria is that it's so big. If I say me, myself, with just 11 of you on this call, should change Nigerian education. It's, it's such a big thing to do. But then I also am encouraged by the fact that it's usually a few people that make a difference. It's usually a few people, a few people that are ready to get something done. 
And there are many examples of this. Um, in the Bible, you see um, three Hebrew boys standing up against the entire kingdom of Babylon. Um, you see David against Goliath and the whole army of the Philistines behind him. But even if we want to talk about it practically today, we find that you ask yourself, why is it in the whole United States with all their military an 84-year-old man, a 82-year-old man is their president? You know, there are usually a few people that want something that go for it and the world pays attention to them. By the way, all these people you see in this picture, they are all big girls now. <laughs> Don't think they are small children, no. I know Shion is thinking all these boys, they are older than you. <laughs> this is way back in the day. <laughs> all these people are big boys now, very big boys. And they are almost as big as me. So, um, if you are somebody that is committed, then you are somebody that understands the idea that PFF is thinking about what PFF wants to do. And PFF is connected to a lot of missionary organizations, organizations that do Christian work. And um, we are not a Christian organization in the form of we are not preaching the gospel, <laughs> but we are very Christian influenced. And that means that we can work with anybody, no matter who that person is, except if the person is Satan himself. I, that's where I draw the line. But if you are not an evil person, that is, you are not practically doing something bad to people, then we can work with you. Many of you may not know that um, some of the people who teach us are not even Christians. The people we bring to speak in our events, some of them are... Um, uh, like um, people from other religions, Buddhists, Muslims, Jews. Many of them, they find the point of what we are doing really, really wonderful. And they decide to work with us, right? So you may notice that I wear a lot of this shirt again in these pictures because this is not the same place. <laughs> The first picture was taken in Oka. The second was taken in Osaka. It's not the same place and it's not the same children. They don't know each other, but I know all of them. So um, why was I wearing a lot of these shirts? I, I can't explain. But it, it just feels really cool to wear it at the time. Um, so yeah, th this is where PFF started back in 2014. And... Um, Gideon was one of the first few people that we held a, a tutorium for people or postgraduate students in in a University of Ibadan who wanted to write um, this uh, English proficiency exam. Also, um, some of our first programs were me and Cheesy Daniels doing an event teaching students how to pass exams. Those were our earlier events, just trying to ensure that we bring that gap, we bridge the gap between education and what we have on the ground. So do you have any question on this before I move on? All right. Um, So what are the arms and the organizational structure of PFF? As I, as you can see clearly, this is under construction. <laughs> That's why this place is planned. We, we, are, we have a committee we've inaugurated to clearly brand PFF. That conversation is ongoing as this meeting is going on now. That is also happening somewhere in the world. So there are people that are branding PFF, talking about PFF arms and organizational structure and how to put it in a book. But when, when, when we finish, these are what you are going to expect. All of these people currently exist, but not under these names. And this is what you are supposed to expect. You are supposed to expect that there will be PFF staff. PFF staff refers to people who are actual staff working for PFF. They are more 
they are volunteers, but much more serious. They are much more committed to what PFF is doing. We can call on them to answer for things. Some of these staff will be people like you. We want to be entirely student run. And the reason for this is that I believe undergraduate education in Nigeria underutilizes the potential that students carry. And that is to say that almost everywhere else I've gone in the world, students work. Like before a student comes out of school, they have a lot of work experience behind them. But you find in Nigeria, you take lectures from morning to night, you have no time to work for the four years you spend in school. And that age, between uh, 16 to 22 years, is when you are so, so creative and you have energy. But you spend it in school, reading books, doing student politics. You don't really understand how to translate your skills into the outside world, which is something I really want to change. And that is why we are going to focus on creating staff out of students. However, we also want to, if somebody is serving a youth copper, a fresh graduate, a somebody who is in the first three years of work, that is a young person that just left university three years ago, we can take that person as a staff of PFF. But we really, really want a person that is a student because we want to give students work experience, put things on your CV. I've worked at this and that, and people that are your employers, we know you have experience behind you. The staff of PFF will be in charge of things like our people and culture, more like HR. Um, you'll be trained for all of this anyways. You can have a um, staff that will handle our IT team, our seminars team, our majority of the things we do, there will be staff assigned to oversee it. I'm going to get to this later. We also will have a board of volunteers, which is what everybody here now is, which is what everybody identifies themselves as with PFF for now, because we've not delineated this, um, these terminologies yet. The volunteers are people who want to work with PFF, but on a low key, more like we will not want to PFF work to interfere with what we are doing. So we can give like two hours every week or three hours every week or four hours every week so that we can learn what PFF is doing. We can give our time on the ground, but we don't want to, we don't want to take on a much more serious responsibility. Volunteers also can be people that work with us short term in the sense that we want to do a work in Nsoka, for example. I, I will not have you pack yourselves in a bus from Ife to Nsoka, no. <laughs> but we can raise volunteers. We can send two people, say Emeka and Peter, go to Nsoka. We are going to bring more people, train them immediately on what we want you to do there, and get them to work with you. And that's how we normally would do. When we go to photo, there are just three of us that go, but from there we raise people who will join us immediately and they get to work. We tell them, this is what we want. This is what we want you to do. They become PFL volunteers. They wear our t-shirts, put on the tag and all that. They work with us for the period of that project and that's it. The advisory board will refer to people who are um, like our brother Gideon, our brother Chizi, Afua, and the rest of them who are also working for PFF, but they are not students. They also have money. <laughs> I know you're asking yourself, why am I not in the advisory board? Do you have money? You know, that's the question. Okay, okay, let's circle back. They also have money to fund our projects. <laughs> Many of the things we do, they cannot just volunteer or be a staff, they also will fund it because we are at the moment 100% run by donations, right? So it is funding that ordinary people give us, not government. We've not worked with governments before and I hate politicians. And I don't know if I will ever work with a government or politician. Maybe if God changed my mind or we meet a good politician, a normal human being. He's not a devil, you know. But for now, the advisory board are people who work for PFF, who are very committed to PFF, 
and also bring their resources to what PFF does, like Gideon, like Afwa, like my wife, my like many other people. There are so many of them. You don't know many of them, <laughs> but they know you. <laughs> you can be rest assured they know you. And if you need help, they are going to come around. The mentors are going to be people who want to be part of PFF, who found what we are doing, but are like senior volunteers. So they are people who can talk to people if they need help. If you want to talk to somebody like you want to create a career in law, you are just a fresh graduate, you don't know what to do, what career options are open for you. We have people that can speak to you, guide you through with applications, things like that. Those are, we are creating, we have those people, but we are creating a, a group for them. You are somebody, you, you are confused on what to do with your life. What sort of opportunities do you want to take in life? You have physical problems, you have emotional issues. We have people that can advise and all that. We are creating that. Then we have elders. These are very senior people, very, very senior people. And when I say these are senior people, you already know they are like super senior, who um, underscore what PFF is doing from the back and watch. And so they are very, very senior people. They are not always going to be available, but they are quite senior. Then we have the <clears throat> affiliated friends who are people who just like PFF, but once in a while, they partner with us. Let's say they are running their own organization like our Auntie Joan. Um, Auntie Joan is doing a project. She's doing a $30 million project in Lagos at the moment. She's our friend. She's always ready to jump on PFF stuff, but we know that um, her commitment to us is not like every other person. And so, I want to have you ask your questions now before we move to our vision and mission. So tell me, what are your questions? You should have some questions at this time. Or you should have set some questions anyways. Do you have any questions? Sir, I have a question, sir. Tell me. Um, concerning the staffing, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean, doesn't mean, um, a someone who has got here for a long time cannot get access to that oh no 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 it doesn't mean that but the point of what we are doing is this um somebody who has graduated for a long time is already like very very committed in a career right so if we are, if we need your expertise as somebody that's graduated for a really long time, we will call on you, trust me. But if you want to be a staff of PFF and you've graduated for a long time, we fear that you may not have the commitment to work with us. Also, we fear that uh, because we are not offering you a paid position, right? So there are no salaries with what we're doing. What we are giving is stipends. And um, <clears throat> stipends is not going to help somebody who graduated like 10 years ago. He's going to want more money, obviously, you know. But somebody who is an early career person or somebody who is young in the university, I, they don't mind stipends, right? And it's not like um, our goal is to give stipends. It is because we can't afford to give any other thing for now. Also. We would rather people work for us because they want to, not because we are paying them. Of course, we get to that point where we pay them. And so it won't even matter whether you, you're a graduate or not. If you bring your, your CV, we'll consider it. But for now, this is what is influencing how we are thinking. Or what, what do you suggest? Yo, Sam. Hello. All right, any other person, any other question? I have a question. Yeah, go for it. 
okay, um, being a staff, does it mean full-time job? Like, is it full-time work? Oh, no, no, no. We don't do full-time work in PFF, at least for now. And really, most organizations that don't have a 24-hour work, I don't know why people, there are people who put people and they just sit in offices doing not. That's not our style. Everybody that works with PFF has like 1 million other things they are doing. Like me, I do like 3 million things. <laughs> so it's not, we are not offering full-time positions. It is a position that we allow you to do other things. If we offer you a full-time position, then we must pay you. Like we will give you a graded salary and a good salary, not Nigerian level salary. Like we'll pay you what anybody will pay you anyway. <clears throat> but we don't have full-time positions. What you will do as a staff is literally, you will commit to taking PFF job serious when we call on you to do it. So let's say you are somebody in charge of um, people and culture, for example, more like you are a PFF HR. It is your job to design, say, um, birthday messages for people. If we don't care when you get it done, you know what you are supposed to do, so do it. Many of our positions will be remote, so you work from where you are, and we can pay back expenses you make if you work for us, or we give stipends. That is, take a job that is funded. Like there is a project I I was telling an emperor about that we I said you can work with me on. That project, we are hoping that it will be funded. If that project is funded, then we'll grade the salary for the work he has done and given. But if the project is not funded, then there is no place we can get money to pay him. I don't know if this answer is making sense to you, or maybe I'm talking in Oibo terms. Do you, do you no, get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, the second one is, you, you mentioned that undergraduate say that again you mentioned that um, basically it should be better for undergraduate um, to be honest your voice is looking like it's disappearing can you hear me yes you are back welcome back okay you mentioned that um is basically for undergraduate. Oh, no, that's not what I said. You see, you misunderstood what I said. I said we prioritize, not that it is for. We would rather, you know, they say, what would you rather have? They say, would you rather have 10 million dollars or 10 million pounds? You say, oh, I would rather have 10 million pounds, isn't it? It makes more sense. But we would rather we employ undergraduates, but where that is not possible, we, we do not mind and I explained the reason for that explanation, isn't it? Yes, you did. Okay. All right. Yeah, tell me what is that all you wanted to worry you are worried about? Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad now. Okay. Yeah. Tell me, Bisola, why are you not talking? Is it because your network is bad? Okay, now I'm asking her why she's not talking. She still cannot talk. <laughs> Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? I think it's time for us to go on a short break. So I will, I will have you go on a short break for five minutes, come back by 9.27. Some of you came absolutely late, but we'll talk about that later. But let's go on a short break, shall we? So um, stand up. Some of you, I know you, you are sleeping already. You, you are dozing. Stand up from your bed, walk around, stretch your muscle, come back by exactly 9.27.
I'm this so I see whether you can leave and join back. Somebody call on the phone. It's possible she she just left off. All right, we're back. We're back and better. Hello, please, yeah. Everybody, everybody. Is everyone here? Charles. Yes, sir. Yo, Hello, what's up? I'm here. Oh, Tony, how far? I was asking about him. Now, so can you guys see? I make another one in a pool. And to make us in a buffalo. Okay, guys. So, um, 
<laughs> Some of you like sleeping. And it's not good. Always tell yourself, I'm young. I will sleep when I'm, I, I blow. Right? So let's talk about the mission and vision of PFL. So um, our mission is to intervene in educational areas of need. So how do we do this? We do scholarships, capacity development, seminars. We want to create a world where everyone is empowered with adequate education. So um, these, um, these scholarships, seminars, and all that, we call them um, social tools. Social tools, that is tools that you use to help you make your education better. Why do we want to be doing this? If you study in places that are not Nigeria, you will find that the schools themselves take it as a responsibility. The schools themselves take it as a responsibility to do seminars, introduce students to mentorship sessions, train them on things, how to use a tarot, how to apply for scholarship, postgraduate journey, the school itself. But all the time, and I've been in Nigeria both as a student and as a teacher, we have never even, it has never occurred to us to leave our own internal politics. I think, of, oh God, I shouldn't say this. <laughs> because I know some of you are in that my faculty. And the point is, I'm not trying to say that we're not doing great. I'm not, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, <clears throat> I'm saying that we can do better. There is a lot of room. Like there's so much room to do better. It almost looks like we are not doing anything. You know, so, um, um, yeah. So since Nigerian education is not providing this information, we want to provide it. You are going to find by the time you interact with your peers in other universities across the world that, and by the grace of God, all of you are going to be able to go to other places and compare what you see with what you are getting in IFE or in UNN or in uh, UNISIC or somewhere else. And so when you look at what is missing, you now bring that vision and say, this is what I want to add to Nigerian educational system. So let me ask you guys, from your own experience as students, what have you observed that is missing? I've told you some myself, but tell me, what have you observed that is missing? Um, we have graduates here. Where are the graduates? I'll show yourself. What did you think you would have added to your postgraduate experience to make it better? The first name I see here is Chine. Oh, yeah, tell me. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, one of the major things that is missing is the practicality of what we are learning, like the practical aspect. I studied engineering, but I can bet on my life that I've never seen a rig. Like I studied petroleum engineering, but I, if like if I'd not gone to an industry, I've never seen a rig. But they teach us on paper, on board. So that's one place that the Nigerian system is lacking so much. Because as an engineer, even as an electrical engineer, so the person cannot fit up office say lights and all that. So that one is number one. Then um uh, yeah it's two boys down to the industry experience I want to say now. Two boys down to the industry experience. So I don't know if there is a way that they can be merging to students to industries for internship. They used to do that before but not now. So it will also be a good one. Like everyone will be merged to their field like that to just get the experience before coming back to conclude the course. Beautiful, okay. beautiful. And that is, I. in fact, <laughs> I have a friend who is doing a PhD here. 
<laughs> and he was a lecturer in UNISIC. He taught in UNISIC for four years before he came for his PhD. And this, <laughs> oh God, I don't like saying, talking about things like this because it makes it look like things are so bad. But the guy was like, he said, this is his first year of school. <laughs> and if somebody that is teaching other people is saying this is his first year of school, fear catch me on his students. So, be like, say those students go be anything less than Olodo. Because they won't know if the professor, your lecturer, no even know. Like he, he comes to a place, he sees things working, and he's like, this is my first year of school. What has he been teaching? You know? So tell me, my graduate friends, tell me, Francis, wait, Francis, you're not a graduate. You just look like one. <laughs> you can't deceive me. You are looking like a graduate, but you are not. You are not. Jason Bond, tell me, what do you think is missing? Uh, I think the symbol is not listening. <laughs> is there anybody from the arts that can tell me? Because I want to balance it. Samuel, what, what did you study? Science laboratory technology. Okay, science people. I, I'm sure what you are going to talk about will be similar to what she just said. <laughs> yes, um, also you said part of it also now about there's no time for a student to earn money while studying, mm -hmm. and also earn a student while studying. That is correct. And there's something else I noticed. A few years ago, I had a student who committed suicide. And it pained me a lot because there is so much to, like, if someone is undergoing problems, like your mind is, bending and you need someone to talk to you don't even have resources like that you know i've had one of my students who was extremely sick on the day she was going to write my exam and she insisted she must write it i said god forbid what because she was so sick she 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 couldn't keep up i literally had to carry her to my office and she vomited in my something um, a, a, a food flax I had and I had to throw away the food flax and all that but one of the things that was the reason why she had to do that was because she felt like if she left the exam she would never be able to rewrite it they would give her an F but I said it's me you can't get F on something like this but I know that many people would not consider something like that because the whole process of a writing exam, even when someone is dire sick, the resources are not there. The, so there's a lot that Nigerian education can do. Some of the ways that countries solve the problem of students not having industry experience is to attach what they are doing to industries, you know? provide counseling services and all that. That is part of the things that we are trying to resolve through PFL. If you have those kind of visions, tell us, give us your ideas. We'll really, really like to work with it. Our mission and vision is also on our website. And I want to know if any of you have checked our website before. If you have not, please check the website. You will enjoy it. So who, what, and where? Who, what, and where? Who is the PFL vision meant for? Children and young people. Everyone who still needs education is captured under this label, right? Forms of support we provide will be counseling, soft skill training, and others. Um, there's a plan we are having of having to train people in tech skills and things like, like that. But we also believe that other 
emotional support skills that we can give are also fundamental to creating a perfect student. If you're in school, we, we classify you as somebody that PFF can still help. So we can do projects for postgraduate students, undergraduate students, and many more, right? But our primary focus are children and young people because of we are interested in molding the future. Educational intervention is what we do. In the end, we are going to be setting up schools, right? But for now, we are working with schools. The reason why we work with schools and not try to set up our own schools is for purposes of sustainability. If we are going to create schools wherever we go, we have to have people on the ground. We have to sponsor the school. We have to get premises for the school. These are not things we don't want to do, but at the time we don't have the resources to do that. So it's better for sustainability purposes to work with schools that currently exist. We teach people, we make it easy for people to be taught. And um, our main goal is to create educated people. That is people that have insight. Uh, we interpret education here in the most general of terms. So supporting education may mean that we can provide scholarship or educational study materials or train teachers. So everything we do must revolve around education. And I, I learned a bitter lesson. Let me tell you a story that when we are starting a few years after, I was in front of the University of Ibadan and I met this man. He was a Hausa man of Lani from the north, wherever, I don't know. But he was rolling in the mud and begging people for money. So people would pass and drop money on him. So I was with my um, friend, more than a friend. Can you be more than a friend? Well, don't worry about the rest of it. Don't, don't think that way. Come back. Come back. <laughs> so we saw that young man and we said we are going to do something for this guy and we decided to do something so we wrote to a foundation in Quara state in elori and said can you give us a wheelchair a mobile wheelchair that this guy can use so that he doesn't need to wallow in the mud anymore we did the project we contacted them the next week they were ready they had mobile wheelchairs we called the guy, we told him, we are going to present this to you. He was ready. The day we were ready, we all landed there, right where he was and gave him that product. We took pictures, you know, no more stuff, and we left. So three days later, I see the guy in the mood again. <laughs> I said, oh, ah, bros, what happened? And so, his friends, because he doesn't speak any English, told me that removing him from the ground means that people will not be sympathetic to him. It means we are trying to make him walk by force. Meanwhile, he can just be in the ground and be getting free money. And so he will reject what we give him. And in fact, that wheelchair that we gave him, he had sold it. I'm like, what? <laughs> and that is to show that there are hazards in going into what you are not supposed to do. In the sense that if, if we were working with people who were begging cripples, people who can walk and all that, we would have known to properly train the guy in a skill first before we gave him something that would remove him from begging. Because begging gave him free money. Do you get what I'm saying? Like when I want to do things for children. I don't just see any child and give him money. Like we've had a child that was not seen at the time. He, he had very bad vision problems. And so we took him to a hospital. We got his eyes checked, gave him glasses that were better. So we were ready to do things for him, like put him in school. But one day, when we were ready to do that, the boy called us on the phone and said his mother told us to buy him a bicycle. And so I knew that the family was not serious. If we ever gave the parents money, 
to pay their school fees, they will not do that. They will rather use the money on something else. And so we stopped our intervention at the point of giving him um, ability to see better because the guy was literally blind without his glasses and he didn't have money to change the glasses. We also have had one boy in Enugu. <laughs> Every day, these boys will go be selling pure water and their mom was a widow. So we decided to, you know, put them in school. We went to the school, spoke with them. We paid the first of their school fees, three of them. But the boys who refused to go to school, they will use the uniform we bought for them, <laughs> remove the shirt and be going to sell pure water to make money. <laughs> and the mother was saying we should, instead of paying the school, the school fees, we should give it to her so she can use it to train her children. But we know that she will not do that. So my point is that the reason why we decided to create a niche in education is because Nigerians are very funny. And we, are, we have met things that I'm telling you this bad story, not to say that it's all bad. I'm telling you that we also guide against things like that because a lot of our people are really funny. And sometimes you think somebody is in need, but they are not. We instead strive to help people that actually need it. You know, we help people that actually need it by doing our own due diligence and um, helping people that actually need. So where are we doing this thing? Nigeria is our primary focus. Africa is our secondary focus and the world is our tertiary focus. So what have you learned so far? Uh, is anybody writing any questions down? Have you started doing your questions yet? Or are you just listening? Anybody reading any questions yet? Vivian, have you written any questions? Now, Vivian, can I hear you? Um, no, sir. I want to do it after the anointment. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm not be able to form questions when I'm listening to you, sir. Uh, but I'm jotting down the areas where I will ask questions from. This one, are you writing down questions? Uh, we can we can hear you. I believe she's sleeping in me. She's sleeping and slumbering. Who is forming questions? Charles, are you forming any questions? Let me ask Jason Bond. She's my very smart student. Jason Bond, are, are you forming any questions? Jason Bom, I know she has slept. You know what you are going to do? Ms. Ola says she can't hear anything, but she can hear everyone. How does that work? <laughs> what kind of grammar is this? See what she sent in the chat. I can't hear anything, but I can hear everyone. Cap. Big on cap. Oh. Okay. She meant no one can hear her. Wow. All right, all right. So who is who is who is somebody should fear should flash Jason Bomb to see if she's sleeping? Um, Deborah, did you write any question? 
Um, no, sir. Really? Um, sir, I'm a little confused. I'm a bit confused. What, like, we should write questions and send it to the group. So you were write questions. You sent five questions about what we did in the training. Yes, today and tomorrow. Okay. And then okay. you sent to everybody. They will answer it and send to you. You also answer the same questions that you said. Oh, okay, sir. You mark your question. Mark everybody else's question. All right, sir. And then. Other people will send you their questions as well to solve and send back to them. Oh, okay, sir. So on Friday, you go come and tell me your scores, the scores of the people that answered your question. Five over five, four over five, three over five, you know? You will tell me the scores. I will add it to everybody else's score, and that's how we know the highest. All right, sir. They mean. So let's say you send your question to Bisola, Francis, Peter, Charles, and they all return their answers to you. Give Bisola one, give Charles zero, give this other person two, give this person three. Give yourself five over five, of course. <laughs> I'll. Other people return their marks. I'll check what score you gave to Charles one, what score this other gave to Charles, what score this other person gave to Charles. I add it together and that will be Charles' score. So if you want to win the competition, how you can do it is you set the toughest questions possible so that everybody else will fail your question and only you will get five. You get it? You get it? Smart move. Smart move. So you said the toughest ever. So everybody will fail your questions, but only you know the answer to your own question. <laughs> That's a smart move there. Be like Sabinus. Make smart moves, okay? Do you understand it, Deborah? Yes, sir. I get your point now. Thank you, yeah. sir. Let's talk can about Okay, tell me. The questions, I would send it um like after each training or the next day or on or everything on Thursday. No, you said the questions from what we learned today. Like today, we are ending in seven minutes. So you okay. said the questions on what we learned today and tomorrow. We are like rounding up. So once it gets to 9.55, I'm going to stop talking and take your questions and all that. Give you some time to jot things down and all that. So based on what we learned today and what we are going to learn tomorrow, you are going to set the questions. Five of them. Then you send to everybody's DM. Don't drop it in the chat. Send to everybody. So, in. Yeah, tell me. So it's not immediately after each training. It's like after the whole training. Tomorrow is not the whole training. Tomorrow is the oh, second day. Yeah, sorry. Okay, sir. So the Friday, you are coming here with your okay. answer, with your grades, like a teacher. Okay, sir. I know you will be a good guy. Give yourself zero so that they won't say you are proud. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah that, that's the way. That's the way. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, we do three kinds of projects, three main prongs of projects, educational projects, humanitarian services, missionary activities. So educational programs that we do, you already know it, that's what brought many of you here. Humanitarian services are things that facilitate education. Our educational programs are like our seminars, our workshops, the things we do that are frontline educational things. The success, exam success secrets seminar, 
seminars that focus on um, education. Humanitarian services mean when we send things to, for example, the time Benue was overrun by floods and many children were in IDP camps, we gathered clothes and sent to them. That's a humanitarian service, but we are doing it to facilitate the life of those children. Um, we send books, we send materials. There was a time we gathered pots, pans, plates, anything possible we sent to some IDP camps. We support missionary activities in the sense that um, missionaries who are in places where they are not being seen, we visit them because the missionaries really love people visiting them to see with their two eyes what they are going through. So we go there. I would normally go there, but since I am not able to do that, one of you will volunteer to be the person doing this. You will have to go there yourself, talk to the missionaries, see what they are doing. And you, if you are going, you can't visit them with nothing. You have to carry books, carry materials, help them. Our educational programs include our literacy camps. So like in Ufodo, we went on a camping mission. We stayed there for one week. We set up these kind of things in villages. We've also gone to this village in uh, Oyo State. Uh, what they call this place? Behind um, Ojo, there's this place. If you keep going down, it, we actually were there in a mosque. It was a mosque that gave us the ability. They we use the mosque for that event. We had to teach children how to read, reading, read, literacy projects. We stayed there for a while, and then we came back. And so those are the kind of things we do, and we want people that have the kind of mind that will do that kind of work. So far, nothing bad has happened to us. God has kept us all safe. No accident. No nothing. No kidnapping, and that is how it will remain. And um, yeah, this is where I'm going to stop today. Tomorrow, I am going to continue from YPFF. Oh, see, break time. This is even where I put the break. <laughs> well, 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 that will continue tomorrow because we are totally out of time. So let me take your questions, ladies and gentlemen. Any questions um, from anyone? Okay, since you don't have any questions, here is my own assignment for you. My assignment for you is to identify, identify three problems with Nigerian education and how to resolve them. So imagine that you had all the resources at your disposal to resolve every problem whatsoever. You have all the resources you can resolve any problem. Now I ask you, how would you resolve the problems that you identified? This is my own personal assignment to you, not your own question. I don't change this question and say it's now your question, it's not, it's mine, okay? That is your assignment for when we come tomorrow. <laughs> Tell me three problems you've identified. How can I resolve them? And that is where we end for today. Hi, Emperor. Are you still here? Oh, Emperor is no longer here. Three problems, like pertaining to what? Education, obviously, my dear. Okay. Oh, Emperor told me his phone was at 2%. Oh, that's okay. Your sacrifice is really noted. And um, I will say that this is all I have for you today. I will see you tomorrow at the same time. Please be safe. And uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself today. Did you? Yes, sir. Well, if you did not, don't worry. Come again tomorrow. You will enjoy tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I enjoyed Thank this. Remove my head from the presentation. <laughs>
No, no, we thank you, sir. Come. It we was really impactful. We have one <laughs> head to you know, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's one more head. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. Okay, bye bye. Sleep bye. well. Um, see you guys. I noticed that Peter and Jason Bomb went to sleep after swallowing too much semo. They can't hear me anymore. But it's well. Tomorrow, make sure you eat light food. Eat before six o'clock. See you guys. Uh, all right, sir. <laughs> all right, bye, sir. <laughs>